In its nearly 150 years, the National Grange has been a leader in the fight to bring prosperity and opportunity to farmers and rural Americans. In the late 19th century, rural free delivery was a service fought and attained for rural America by the National Grange. We spoke to Nancy Pope, curator and historian at the Smithsonian National Postal Museum, to tell us more about rural free delivery and the Grange's part in it. Rural free delivery in America really began in 1896 as an experiment. Uh, there had been attempts to try and get a rural free delivery service for decades before that, uh, but, but it really did not start until 1896. It was an experimental service that began in a few towns in West Virginia, because the postmaster at that time, the postmaster general, was from West Virginia. So he selected his towns as the experiment. Uh, the experiments went very, very successfully, and in the next couple of years, they tried experiments on the county-wide level and a few other areas. And by 1902, it was incredibly popular, and it's starting to spread all over the country. But to better understand RFD and its important place in history, let's start at the beginning. Out of the Civil War, there was a city delivery service born. And that meant that from 1960, or sorry, from 1863 on, in America's cities, you could have mail delivered directly to your home, you could have mail picked up from your home. If you lived at that point in the North, it was of course during the Civil War, or if you lived in one of the large um, cities that the service began in. But by the 1870s, um, mid-1870s, there was a city delivery service, free service in pretty much every city in America. So the rural Americans were starting to look at this and say, we're paying the same postage, why don't we get the same service? Um, right now I have to hitch up my horse and buggy and drive 10 to 20 miles into town to get my mail. Maybe there's not even mail there, you never know. But you know, my cousin who's off in New York City has the mail delivered to him on a daily basis, sometimes twice a day. The Grange members worked with local post offices, with their members of Congress, and other concerned citizens in order to institute RFD mail delivery and assure that rural residents enjoyed the same level of postal service that urban citizens enjoyed. Grange leaders in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and the National Grange Legislative Committee were instrumental in pressuring Congress to appropriate federal funds for pilot programs to demonstrate the value of this project. The National Grange was instrumental in getting rural free delivery up and running in America. And that was because of what they called petition nights at the Granges. So the petition started coming out. Um, there wasn't a lot of support for it at first. And that's when the Grange got involved. And they would have Grange night petitions. And as everyone comes in and would sign a petition for rural free to service from that area. And these petitions started going into Congress and to the Post Office Department by the dozens and then by the hundreds. And you had Congress who was very reluctant to touch rural free delivery because at that point they thought they could not afford the service. America was a mostly rural and agrarian nation at the point. And if they thought everyone in America who was on a farm is going to get free mail service, we're going to bankrupt the country. Opponents of RFD mail delivery were extremely vocal in their condemnation of this grain supported program. U.S. Senator Matt Key of Pennsylvania argued. The delivery of mail by this government to the doors of the farmers will destroy rural life to which America is so proud. The center of rural life is the country post office where farmers gather to meet each other and when they get their mail. All that will be swept away by this socialistic scheme. Despite Senator Kelly's worst fears, in 1897 the U.S. Postal Department reported to the Congress on the implementation of several RFD projects in 30 states. So Congress was very, very reluctant, but as hundreds of these petitions started coming in, they started looking at it and thinking, well, you know, we've got um, all our people, our nation that really needs this, something's going on. And though they finally did in the 1890s say, here's $10,000 to the Postmaster General, his name was Wilson, uh, go try it out, and if it works, we'll see about giving you some more money next year. And as I said, he tried it out in West Virginia, it was a great success and Congress started paying a little bit more and a little bit more for it. The Post Office report noted, there has been nothing in the history of the Postal Service of the United States so remarkable as the growth of rural free delivery systems. As more people got the service, the story spread, and more people wanted the service. 
And of course, when somebody in the next town over has something you don't, or the next county over, you want it to. So that starts spreading like crazy, and you have more and more people petitioning the post office department for service. So by the early 20th century, it's become a permanent, official service in the post office department. Nationwide rural free delivery mail was finally established by an act of Congress in 1901. With the advent of this new service, the Postal Service needed a large supply of inexpensive, sturdy, reliable automobiles and trucks. In 1903, in response to this new market, a Michigan businessman named Henry Ford founded a manufacturing com company specifically to supply exactly the type of automobiles and trucks that the Postal Service was demanding in order to fulfill the promise of RFD mail. Funny how so many things like the assembly line stemmed from rural free delivery. The Good Roads Movement was another result of the desire for RFD across the country. Something that was critical to make RFD a success, of course, was the Good Road. Uh, you can't have the guys going out on their routes and unable to finish a route because um, some farmer has a, a really, really bad road or he's got a fence over it. So the postmaster started saying, unless your roads are up to snuff, you're not going to get any mail delivery. Well, of course, if you're on the bad road, you want mail delivery. So what you're going to do is you're going to go out and fix that road. So you have rural free delivery now being a very important part of what's called the Good Roads Movement of the late 19th century. And uh, the Good Roads Movement it benefited everyone. It's uh, something that was good for kids needing to go to school, for anybody that was going in and out of town. Certainly the Grange um, groups would have loved having the better roads and well-maintained roads. Because if a road, even if it was a good road, was not well-maintained, a postmaster could still say, I'm sorry, this road is too muddy, this road has too many holes in it, um, it's going to take forever for my carriers to get over there, or it's dangerous because they're going to fall out of their buggies, whatever is going to happen. He could stop the service. He had it in his power to say, the service will be stopped unless the roads are fixed. The institution of rural free delivery proved to be a success for the National Grange and rural America as a whole. The Grange and the Post Office have had a long history of basically both wanting the same thing when it comes to rural Americans, and that's that the rural Americans have a connection, a communication link to the rest of the world, whether it is getting magazines and newspapers or the Homesteaders Bible as they used to call the old uh, catalogs but something that makes sure that every American is connected through the communication medium of the Post to everyone else. And the Grange, of course, was very strong in, in making sure that their members all connected to each other and the rest of the world as well. Today, the National Grange continues to fight on behalf of rural Americans seeking access. In this century, it's not mail, but broadband internet access that dominates the topic of conversation. But the National Grange remains a staunch advocate for equality in services provided by the U.S. Postal Service in this time of economic struggle. As potential cuts are weighed by Congress and the Postal Service, the Grange stands on the side of rural Americans, serving as a voice in Washington that looks to ensure continued viability of rural America through equitable access.